You ready to roll? Okay. So, I think, I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably saw Jensen's keynote speech, but there was actually a lot to unpack there. I mean, this really is turning into, think about it, you're thinking about it all wrong. How I want you to think about it is how I'm thinking about it. How much of the entire planet's GDP is torn, turned toward AI and AI-related tasks? NVIDIA only has 40,000 developers, 50,000 developers. I don't know, they're hiring a lot of people like crazy. So Jensen's keynote actually has a whole bunch of things. He laid out a roadmap, and that roadmap really does run to 2027, so don't get super excited. But one of the hilarious things from that was when he was talking about Hopper. And he's like, hey, Hopper is nice, and it's really good, and it's okay for some things, is what he said as a sales pitch. But really, everybody should be... Uh, moving toward Blackwell. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. 68 times faster is what he said. I think those graphs are, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. I mean, it's not dishonest, but there's a lot to unpack from those graphs. It's a change in number formats, it's a change in software, and in a lot of ways, NVIDIA is dragging a whole bunch of other, other industries by the seat of their pants as fast as they possibly can go. And what I mean by that, really, I can start the conversation with like the digital twin stuff. So NVIDIA is willing to give you a blueprint of a data center that is ready to run like the NV72 and eventually the NV144, the things beyond Blackwell and Hopper and everything else that we'll talk about in a minute, down to the screw. And so this really opens up a lot of interesting possibilities. It's like, here is the most super optimized data center design that you can get for these GPUs down to the screw. And that makes things really interesting for contractors. Contractors don't have to hire architectural firms. You don't need a lot of... Uh, contracting complication, let's say, if you're ready to deploy a data center. And it's easier for NVIDIA, and it's easier for NVIDIA's vendors to sell you things. Schneider Electric's on board, Supermicro's on board, Dell, HP, Lenovo, Gigabyte, Super... I mean, literally everybody is on board with being able to plug in their infrastructure into these data centers. You're going to have an optimized data center design that you just copy-paste. Every data center is going to be like every other data center in the possible future. So, in our hyper-converged, super consolidated word, and I don't mean hyper-converged in the IT sense, I mean hyper-converged in that there's like five vendors you can buy stuff from, there's like two vendors you buy cinder blocks from, there's like four people you buy steel from. They can optimize the design for them as well. Everything becomes hyper-standardized. Think IKEA, but 600,000 parts in the data center, and that is all optimized. But really, this approach is going to go beyond data center. It's going to go to basically everything. You need to build a steel mill? Well, you can just build the most hyper-optimized steel mill ever. Now, it turns out you can plug AI into the digital twin. This is part of the Cosmos and NVIDIA Omniverse strategy as well. So there's simulations of tanker ships, there's simulations of things beyond the data center, there's simulations of cars, and you can optimize all of that in a software package. The physics simulation, the simulation down to the screw, the wind drag, acceleration, fuel economy, whatever variables you want to optimize for, the only blind spot you have is things that are not yet simulated. So this will only drive an acceleration of things that are simulated. This will also open up a whole world of possibility for robots. And so that was the second thing, the second big thing in my mind for NVIDIA Reveals. They're open sourcing a fully modular robotics framework that is up to and including humanoid robots. And one of the things that they were touting was simulating tasks for humanoid robots in a fully simulated reality. That also dovetails with self-driving cars, but again, I'm getting ahead of myself because all of these things are interconnected and NVIDIA is building software and hardware solutions for all of this. Our robot butler kitchen super amazing future kind of hinges on all of the stuff that was revealed here but this is a, a 10x to 100x force multiplier people like me could pick up the software tooling and build a hyper optimized design for any of this even like a kitchen robot run all of the simulations and everything virtually before i ever actually do any physical hardware prototypes and that's what is driving some of the physical robotics stuff that we saw at nvidia uh, Jensen also talked about software libraries beyond, you know, like Python acceleration and everything like that. There were dovetails into things like uh, medical applications, not just decoding DNA and understanding how proteins work better and all the stuff that goes with that, but accelerating all of that with GPUs. But then if we can accelerate it and fully document it, how it actually works, then maybe theoretically we could run simulations of that as well. I think that is probably a little ways off, but all of these vertical industries are all of a sudden going to be highly dependent on libraries and GPU acceleration and GPU compute at scale. And scale it has. 
a year ago, we were talking about 80 kilowatt racks. This year, we're talking about 120 kilowatt racks. We're talking about Blackwell Ultra coming at the end of 2025. And then Ruben, uh, Vera Ruben, as the successor to Grace Hopper and Grace Blackwell. Uh, it's going to use a lot of the same networking, but then even beyond that, NVIDIA is already talking about co-packaged optics that they have in prototype form. So co-packaged optics is we're doing the optical stuff actually on the physical silicon. That's going to save 30 watts per interconnect, and in the NVL72 setup, every GPU has about six of those 30-watt optical transceivers. Those are going away. I mean, I'm sure it's not going to go to zero watts, but the optical micro mirror, everything that NVIDIA and TSMC are doing together is going to completely change the interconnect industry. They're already there. They're at kind of a power budget constraint already is why they're doing that. Uh, 140 kilowatts per rack. Uh, We saw Dell. Dell was advertising 420 kilowatts in their rack. So up to 420 kilowatts in Dell's rack. In all of the NVL72 solutions that we saw, I mean, everybody is building these for NVIDIA. That's no secret. So what's the differentiator between Dell or Gigabyte or Lenovo? And they were keen to tout their uh, customer solution stuff. So like Lenovo was talking about their healthcare wins and their hospitals and doing data analysis. And oh, an MRI is 30 gigabytes. And so if you have a lot of patients that have 30 gigabyte data, do you want to really send 30 gigabyte of data to the cloud and back down again? I mean, that's hard to do even if you've got a 100 gigabit internet connection. In uh, scenarios like that, they want to do compute at the edge. And so Lenovo was showing off 2U rack solutions and liquid cooling solutions that are ready to deploy in like a hospital context. There was a lot of other customer-centric solutions from Supermicro. Supermicro was talking about their vertical integration. Their stuff that's ready to go for liquid cooling, it's easy, it's standards-based. The Superpod is Gigabyte and NVIDIA coming together to build a liquid-cooled solution that has a little bit of a custom spin on it from Gigabyte. Gigabyte is also doing new enterprise management software so that you can manage your fleet of Gigabyte servers a little easier. And so Microsoft was also here in full force. A lot of their stuff is Azure-related and cloud-based and selling customers on that kind of thing. Microsoft Azure sponsored free candy. This is the free candy meme. You know the van? The van? I'm telling you, it's the van. But Azure, that's, um, there's actually a lot more to Azure. You can deploy it on-premise Azure resources now and add them to the Azure pool and manage your on-premise resources the same as cloud resources, which is a whole other conversation and very fun and exciting. But Microsoft was showing Blackwell RTX 6000, 96 gigs of VRAM in a workstation configuration. The 5090 looks a lot like the RTX, 50, <laughs> or RTX 6000 workstation edition, but instead of 32 gigs of VRAM, it's a 96. I think that means the 5090 was supposed to have 48 gigs of RAM. Maybe we're going to have a 5090 Ti with 48 gigs of VRAM, but, you know, 32, I guess we'll just have to deal with it. But Microsoft was keen to talk about the engineering and innovation that they're doing in order to deal with the uh, power requirements of NVL72 and beyond that NVL144, which is actually not a lot different than NVL72. It's, it's, it is different because you don't have the GPU to GPU interconnect on silicon, but that could be a whole other video that we could have some discussion and some fun, interesting things with that. So uh, when we talk about scaling up and scaling out, which is a big part of Jensen's presentation, he really is taking that very, very seriously so that uh, I guess we can have petaflops and petaflops of compute and bring about our AI future faster. Although I have to say the robotics portion and open sourcing the robotics portion and saying, here, if, if you can use our technology to build robots and do fun stuff with it, go. Like, we don't have time to wait around. We don't have time to capture that market. Just go, use our products, use the software, build the future, build the innovation. And things like that enable really small teams, like a couple of people, a team of a dozen people, a team of 20 people can change the world tomorrow with access to this kind of tooling. Jensen realizes that and is doing as much as he can to accelerate all of that. Yeah, it does confer some advantages to NVIDIA if people are using NVIDIA tools and products to be able to do that. But at the same time, the gross domestic product of the planet turned toward AI tasks kind of a lot. And there's a lot that's actually happening. And so it's very exciting to see technology move this quickly. It's also very Promethean, I think. And it very much is like the the World's Fair, you know, the turn of the 20th century when they debuted electricity. This feels like that every year. We're just a little bit closer to that, a little bit closer to the future. 
So I had a trip out to IBM recently. You may have seen the video on that, or maybe I'm still working on the, the video for that. But mainframes and AI and transaction processing. NVIDIA and Visa and IBM were here to talk about Visa using AI for transaction processing, fraud detection, and that sort of stuff. And it's really interesting because that talk was about how IBM was seeing a three and a half billion dollar return on their AI investment. A lot of companies have spent a lot of money on a lot of hardware and a lot of infrastructure and a lot of build out, but the returns are somewhat dubious. And I think you see that in Wall Street and that's maybe another channel's conversation. I'm more interested on the technology side, but you know, of course, a lot of that bleeds over into business and we talk about it and it's fine, but the room was packed. The room was so packed that they had to turn away a lot of people. And it's one of these large ballrooms with hundreds of people in attendance. And it was basically IBM and Visa saying, hey, we found a way to make money with AI. And we, we're, we've got a return of three and a half billion dollars over last year where you know we were doing crazy investment. And it's interesting to see that application. And it's interesting to see that application on a vector that involves mainframes, some of the most ancient computing technology, and AI, some of the newest and somewhat ephemeral, somewhat questionable as to, oh, are we going to actually make money with this? Or is this just some sort of wild hallucination that is not actually profitable because it's some sort of crazy black box that nobody understands where it's like, well, some stuff goes in, some math happens, and some stuff comes out. Is that really all there is to consciousness? No, I mean, obviously not. But it's another tool. It's another interesting thing. And it's another uh, vector that's interesting, pun intended, to see businesses using those tools to solve real world business problems, even though it's like, well, do we trust a thing that hallucinates? It's like, well, we found some ways to make it hallucinate less, or not at all, architecturally. And so that kind of maturity coming out in a conference like this, where you can do hands-on labs and connect with other people in the industry and connect with companies. There's a whole wing dedicated to startups and startup companies and the ideas that they have and to bring all that together. And uh, I can tell you, the investment banks and the investment firms and uh, all of those people are here in full force. All, even like the, the B-tier investments where it's like, oh, we're only going to invest you know, only several million dollars in a promising startup. They're here also. So if you have something amazing and you want to show it off, NVIDIA would love to show off your interesting project. Did you do a really amazing high school or college project that involved Jetson or AI or whatever? They'll probably pay for you to come next year if you want to you know, do something interesting with that. I could post that on the forums and maybe it'll get some attention. I don't know. There's just, there's just so much interesting future technology here and it's such an interesting melting pot of uh, all of the people that are working around these kinds of things. This, this event has way more people than last year. It was shoulder to shoulder, it was hard to navigate, and it was hard to shoot video on the inside. I mean, there's so much that I'm leaving out uh, from this video, but it really is uh, uh, just a fascinating melting pot of everything from physical AI, and that is moving at light speed. It is moving faster than any industry I've ever seen. The AI umbrella is really propelling a lot of things forward, and I'm kind of at a loss to summarize it any other way than think of the wonder that the people felt seeing electricity and electric lamps for the first time at the World's Fair. This what is going on here. It's really mind-blowing. I'm one of those level one. If you have any questions or I miss anything or hit me up in the forum, there's probably more stuff there and more pictures. I don't know. Check Twitter. Signing out and I'll see you there.